and just to this keep one. keep a safe fine yeah yeah safe Maybe. game safe thank game. you very much thank, thank you. you so now it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague professor polyakov about uh, pericarditis this is a border area between thoracic surgeon and cardiac surgeon so it's a very challenge problem with respect to your presentation <clears throat> Thank you very much for visiting. And uh, the presentation is a, a really challenge for me because uh, the constrictive uh, pericarditis, it's usually referred to the cardiac surgeon, but our center will try to change the situation. And now it's a not big challenge, but a great challenge for thoracic surgeon to do something. Because of the knowledge of thoracic surgeon is allowed to work with a very severe adhesion in the pleural cavity more when the cardiac surgeon which work with a just a, a cold heart it's unmoved heart unbeaten heart it's very simple surgery sometimes if you know anatomy and uh, nobody likes uh, to do uh, i mean the cardiac surgeon to do the surgery take a time because it's uh, lasted more than three hours and the number of, uh, usually we refer to the to the best friend or to the other centers for somebody to do a uh, so complicated surgery and uh, experience from the different centers are also different from from uh, for instance from the japan and from the canada it's uh, from the japan uh, 300 uh, more than 300 cases for four years and from canada it's only 90 cases for 20 years so it depends on the center it depends on the relationship between the uh, cardiac surgeon and the cardiologist it's uh, collect the, the patient in our hospital in a hospital so the incidence is uh, rather low and uh, mostly it's idiopathic now but in 60s uh, was more 60 percent of uh, related to tb disease i mean the constriction of the pericardium also uh, the number of patients after uh, surgery is increased after transplant even after uh, uh, trans heart transplants is increased and more than a third, uh, maybe up to 30 percent it's referred uh, for the surgery can be referred and we uh, observe the epidemiological shift if i can say like that because the uh, the western country is uh, more related to the uh, uh, different fibrotic tissue disease but the asia and russia and the, uh, other countries uh, uh, middle east related to uh, still infectious and TB disease, I mean the uh, construction pericarditis. It's a really simple presentation uh, in the initial phase. Usually uh, we, uh, the therapist and outpatient somewhere in the office can obtain a, a very simple uh, suspicious of this uh, diagnosis. But unfortunately, uh, we uh, frequently miss uh, these uh, very simple symptoms and uh, treat the patient from different uh, uh, diseases, not from uh, the beginning of constriction. So it's very simple if you refer the patient for a chest X-ray or chest X-ray, you just find the calcification. But it's interesting, calcification doesn't not mean the construction. MRI, CT and MRI, of course, it's a four milliliter of thickness. It's uh, presumably it's construction but uh, maybe it's a sensitivity more than 90%, but sensitivity related to uh, the thickness, and not for uh, the construction, not, not for the thermodynamics changes. Of course, we can do a 3D reconstruction. It's very useful for the surgery to plan uh, the access and the plan what kind of the volume of the surgery you can, uh, you can perform. It's a nice picture, really clear, but of course, uh, the most sophisticated is the echo is a gold standard to explore the patient uh, with supposed uh, constriction of the pericardium up to 90 percent of sensitivity sensitivity there is a number of tests i cannot repeat because uh, sometimes the even thoracic or cardiac surgeon cannot understand what happened in the heart but cardiologists experienced cardiologists uh, can describe it and we find <coughs> the really still uh, epic movement. We can find uh, uh, even hemodynamics uh, uh, changes, uh, including uh, jugular vein uh, uh, changes in the pulse and also square root uh, changes. 
uh, the distinguish between uh, between the uh, pulmonary artery and the pulmonary atrium uh, pressure during the inspiration. So I want to stress and emphasize it's a free elephant's base for cardiac uh, uh, constrictive pericarditis diagnosis. It's an echo, CT MRI, and hemodynamics. <laughs> but it was a surprise when I studied, uh, when I prepared the presentation. Even there's not enough to do, uh, some time to do, uh, uh, can we judge about the restriction? Uh, because it's uh, maybe uh, even uh, uh, cons uh, about the constriction because sometimes it's a restriction, so we have to, to uh, choose which kind of surgery should be done, should be did, or uh, transplant or pericardiectomy. So the final steps, it's uh, endomyocardial biopsy. Ex we should exclude amyloid, infl any inflammation, or what's or small toracotomy, but it's uh, uh, beyond the limits. When surgery should be performed? As, up, uh, as soon as possible, when the patient comes to the uh, clinic. Usually we come with the blow up, uh, the symptoms uh, with a different uh, type of uh, uh, comorbidities. For instance, uh, uh, this picture of the belly, the patients undergo uh, orthotopic transplantation one year ago in our clinic. And he came with a really, really severe uh, uh, heart insufficiency. It, it, it treated not the, uh, in another hospital uh, from the uh, uh, heart insufficiency uh, at, le at least six uh, months. It, nobody supposed it's a, a, cons a constrictive pericarditis. So even the, the patient with the compensated, so it's, it's still possible, uh, possible, possible to do a surgery, even uh, in the salvage uh, intention. It's very simple uh, steps. If you find the constrictive pericarditis, you should refer it for the surgery. Not to do a, a long way to treat this patient. It's uh, use, useless. The approaches is a gold standard uh, uh, sternotomy. By the way, we can use uh, uh, clamshell or bilateral, even the watts, but it depends of uh, what uh, aim you, uh, you follow, but usually the sternotomy, I repeat, it's a gold standard. You can access for all uh, surface of the heart you need it. Anesthesia, it's the most important things. You, uh, with anesthesia, uh, became a big friends, and the anesthesia should keep the uh, blood bank under his chair and behind him a cardiopulmonary bypass. Because the surgery, it's uh, on the one side, it's very simple. For the other side, it's very difficult to treat, to fix the complication is acute. The complication should be different uh, and uh, uh, coronary artery damage or more over defect on the heart. So the blood loss should be very rapid and uh, quick and the heart may be stopped. So you should be prepare for massive uh, transfusion and for even for circulatory arrest. Also, you have to prophylactic the stroke and liver and kidney failure. Nothing more nor less. Uh, for the surgery, it's uh, a boundary of the section is uh, really uh, simple. It's from left to right. Uh, it sh you should, be, uh, should release the left and the right ventricles. So if uh, do, uh, remove the pericard from phrenicus to phrenicus, and also you uh, unsling the orifice of lower and the upper vena cava, upper part, and unleash, uh, unsling uh, open, uh, upper hemiarch of the pulmonary arteries and veins. And schematical scheme is shown what should be done. It's a mistake if you try to remove the posterior part of the pericardium. Is it partial pericardium? Can we justify it? Sometimes yes, but you have to do uh, to remove the, as much pericardium as it possible because the results is different and the long-term result for subtotal pericardectomy is much better than for partial total, uh, pericardectomy. And the sect started from uh, 
from the visible healthy uh, border of the heart, outer root level, and you use the scalpel with the longitudinal incision from the uh, basis to the apex. We try to find the lawyer, but sometimes it's difficult to find. If the if fibrotic adhesion, you use the uh, uh, scissors or monopolar coagulator. If calcified, just a cut and never push or pull the tissue. The results, it should be the effect on the myocardium. It's the most uh, mistake if you try to do a blind dissection. It's very important sometimes if the pericardium is calcified, the teeth from the inner part of the pericardium is engrowed to the myocardial tissue. Sometimes it's not possible to remove these teeth. So you just uh, cut the teeth and leave it on the place and try to bypass the, the problem in that case. And uh, there is not a uh, problem to leave it. The problem if you fi find a defect, don't be shy to use monopolar electrocality, not by, uh, bipolar, because the people is uh, useless in this case. You just uh, spend the time and they like a monkey business to do uh, uh, the cauter with the small bleeding. And the right ventricle and left ventricle should be released. Uh, bands between the uh, right ventricle and pulmonary should be exceeded. And the uh, right atrium, if the right atrium cannot be released, you can leave it. Because uh, hemodynamic, it's, it's uh, uh, not important. And the finally, uh, the all uh, wounds, you see the well contracted, fill it by uh, open heart and it's uh, contracted very well. It's like a battlefield. And rapidly, even after surgery, after one hour or immediately, you have a, a little changes. So the pressure in pulmonary artery is decreased. Central venous pressure is decreased. The condition of the patient is, uh, became a better. And seven days after pericardectomy, you see the uh, differences in the heart changes. Also, you see the hemodynamic changes, which is better. And follow-up mortality depends on uh, what kind of uh, etiology you have. For idiopathic, it's a much better uh, survival rate. And for renal or if they have a, a constructive pericarditis after irradiation, it's uh, maybe worse as results. Also, renal insufficiency, poor ventricular function, uh, pulmonary hypertension on, on time of surgery, uh, insu uh, chronic uh, heart insufficiency, hyponatremia, ascites, hyperbilirubinemia, maybe not on water from the surgery, but we still do this. We have a lot of uh, experience, but it's uh, only 19 pericardi uh, pericardioectomies, uh, with only one with cardiopulmonary bypass, uh, two pericardioectomy after heart transplantation, after previous heart surgeries. Uh, the rest of the was 40%, uh, was 40% uh, uh, of the rest was uh, after, uh, during, uh, due to TB disease, and with aortic valve prosthesis, and one patient died. Half of them was done by thoracic surgeon. So the finally, I'm gonna to say that the surgery is a teamwork, and we I emphasize if you do a surgery earlier, you have a, a good more good results after. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Igor, for your beautiful presentation. There is any question from the audience? No question. So, Igor, I have one question for you. Uh, in your presentation, you have described almost 20 cases. All of these cases have been treated through sternotomy or re-sternotomy in your series? Yeah, all sternotomies. Because we have described that there are several methods for arrive to the pericardium, so like clamshell, double thoracotomy, VATS, and so on. But I think that at the end, any thoracic surgeon, any cardiac surgeon, would, would prefer to stay on the sternotomy or re-sternotomy in case of previous surgery. Do you agree? Even uh, re-sternotomy. Yes. Okay. Thanks okay. a lot. So we can uh, consider close this session. I expect Professor Solli and uh, the other